Mr. O'Reilly, you probably are aware that I was solicited to get a free phone in my condominium not far from the Capitol, which began my journey at looking at one of the most fraud-infested programs ever conceived in the federal government, and that's the Lifeline phone program. Um, I, I, now, keep in mind that the, the goal here is wonderful, and I support it. The goal is laudable, and I support it. But this program was so flawed from its inception in the Bush administration um, in terms of oversight. And I want to ask you a couple of questions about that oversight. It has come to my attention recently that, once again, we have discovered uh, fraudulent applications being submitted. And the two companies that have been uh, cited um, by what I believe to be accurate reporting uh, were, have been the only two companies ever penalized in the Lifeline program. Uh, uh, out of a multi-billion dollar program, they were fined a whopping half a million dollars, $500,000 a piece. Um, now we find this information out where uh, the reporting indicates that supervisors were telling people, it's okay if you submit fraudulent applications. The more, the better. Um, my first question to you is, if your investigation reveals that reporting to be accurate, would you be advocating for barring those companies from further participation in the Lifeline program? Senator, thank you for your question. I do believe the commission has done some good work in trying to improve the Lifeline program. A number of items are still to be implemented, but if it, and I'm unaware of the circumstances you speak of, but if that's the case, that certainly should be on the table for the commission. It is the obligation of the commission to enforce its rules and the statute, and I would fully want that to happen in this case. As an auditor, one of the things that really offends me about this is that the FCC prohibits providers from maintaining records of eligibility under the auspices of privacy. Now, let me see if I get this straight. You're getting a free phone, but we can't keep your records in order to audit later to make sure that you are eligible. Are you willing to make a commitment at this hearing that you would be advocating for a change in that rule that we could keep records for purposes of auditing eligibility of the people who are participating in the program? So I believe that notwithstanding the good work of the commission, problems still, still exist in the Lifeline program, even though we're going to implement some more changes. I suggest to you that a top to bottom review of the program is in order, and if that's the, uh, a helpful uh, solution to that issue, I would want to look at that very closely. Another um, problem that is going to never, ever, we're never going to get the fraud out as long as you're allowing these companies to incentivize people that they make more money the more people they sign up. It reminds me of when we have found fraud in getting signatures for a petition or for signing up people to vote. When you pay people per person, you're creating an incentive for them to manufacture applications and uh, to duplicate. I mean, we, they found one person who was selling for two companies, so when he signed up one for one company, he signed them up for the other company because we all know the database isn't there, that they can even find duplicates at this point. Um, would, you be, would you be willing to look at a rule that would prohibit companies from incentivizing salespeople based on how many people they sign up for the program? Yes. Thank you. Um, let me also ask you about um, the shot clock on the approval of the merger for Sprint. Um, the, you know, is traditionally the FCC has used a 180-day shot clock as a guideline. Um, it as that that merger has been pending now for far beyond that 180 days. Um, is that shot clock deadline effective, and uh, should it be continued? And what can you do, what would you do to ensure timely, because sometimes not getting an answer is worse than getting an answer you don't want. And this, the idea that things can linger, especially when there are stakes as high as this for a company, um, is, is really problematic. And if you would um, address that, I would appreciate it. Senator, I don't want to speak about the specifics sprint situation, but I do agree with you, and I would pledge to you that my promise to try to comply as best as possible with uh, whether it's 180 days or maybe we should look at that in terms of shortening that, but I would want to uh, live up to that agreement that we try to complete the mergers as soon as possible because one way or the other, as you say, sometimes getting an answer is more helpful than dragging the situation out.